Welcome to A Watchman's Journal. I'm Diana Larkin. Today, I have another exciting interview to bring you. Amy and I met on Twitter, now X, and she has been a great blessing in my life. And the Father has supernaturally been leading her and guiding her how to hear his voice, how to know what's going on these days, and how to respond to it. And he leads and guides her a lot. He does speak prophetic words to her, but he also leads her in the word of God in an amazing way that I want her to share with all of you to inspire and encourage you. So Amy, thank you for saying yes and coming on today. Thank you so much, Diana. I mean, this is surreal. I can't even believe I'm I'm face to face with you. <laughs> it is um, very fun. Yeah, and it's, it's amazing. I mean, my whole life is I feel changed so much over the past couple of years. Amen. Um, you know, just a little bit about me. I mean, I'm I'm married. I live in Florida. My son's in college. And um 2020 hit like a frying pan over the head basically and uh woke me up. And uh, when COVID came, my girlfriend and I, we used to be on the phone a lot and we'd say, I know this is on purpose. We know this is a thing. Like this was something somebody did to us. You know, this mm-hmm. wasn't just like, you know, Wuhan, uh, you know, wet market, you call that wet market. Yeah, tall yeah, tale. I didn't, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it was like, you know, no, 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 no. And um, I was raised Catholic my whole life. And I I started following Q and some truther channels on Telegram mainly, and really started waking up more and more to, you know, uh, the church and the evils in the church and the Pope and all these things. And I couldn't do it anymore. I couldn't, I couldn't go to the Catholic church. They were all masked up. They were six feet apart. They Mm -hmm. weren't even like, um, you know, some parts of communion, like the blood, they weren't doing that. I, I was like, you know what? I know I went one time and I was like, I can't go back. I'm not doing it. So then I was without a church. Yeah. And um, so then um, we're referring to my notes. So I don't forget to tell you something. Oh, so during that time, I, and I think this was Holy Spirit. God was working on me because my whole life, practically, my husband has read the Bible. I never had a desire never picked up the Bible. I'd go to church. I'd do my Sunday thing, but never picked up the Bible. And, but my husband read the Bible every morning and, Mm -hmm. um, he would come to me and he'd say, the book of Ecclesiastes is amazing. You need to read the book of Ecclesiastes. And he was hammering on me about this. And I was like, okay, okay. You know, thinking, right. Like I'm going to read the book of Ecclesiastes. Well, it turned out amazing. It's like how God works. The verse in Ecclesiastes that what has been will be again, there's nothing new under the sun, has been a key for me in the scriptures that Holy Spirit shows me. So he was working on me back then. But I started thinking, I need to start a Bible study. Like, just out of the blue, all of a sudden, I had a hunger for God's word. And I didn't know the first thing. I didn't know where to begin, anything. I was like, and I kept thinking, these times are so weird. I know it's got to be in the Bible somewhere about this. Are we in end times? I started thinking, you know, we must be in end times here or something. So anyway, so I start hunting around for somebody to teach me the Bible. And I ended up with um, this girl who was a mutual friend. And I kept asking her, I said, well, point to the part about today. Like what's going on today? That's where I want to get right to the meat here. Let's not start at book one, do, 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 you know, Genesis and all the things. <laughs> I just want to go like, where are we now? And she, and she was kind of like, well, there's really no part about now. And I was like, you're fired. So I fired her. And then I was back to myself again, like with, you know, this hunger for the word. Yeah. And then I, through the truth or to the truth or channels, I found his glory. Okay. So Pastor Dave Scarlett and his glory. Then I found Amanda Grace. And at the time, hard to believe, but Amanda Grace only had four videos. <laughs> she only had four videos that I knew of. And they were on, they were on recordings. And I would play those recordings. And I was like, wow. So then I was comparing the truth or channels and what I'm hearing there and God's word. And I was like, whoa, whoa. Okay. 
So then uh, through somehow through that, I ended up at the Reawaken America tour with Clay Clark. Mm -hmm. And I attended that. It was at the River Church in Tampa, which is Pastor Rodney Howard Brown's church. Oh, yes. Had no idea going to that was going to change my life. Wow. I answered the altar call and gave oh. my life to Jesus, gave my heart to wow. Jesus. And everything changed, like overnight, yeah. everything changed. So then as I'm watching now, I'm watching his glory all the time. And he starts this new show called Window into the Supernatural. And that's where I met <laughs> you. Um, and, you know, just like a little bit of more history for like the past 20 years, I have seen 9-11 on the clock, morning and night, morning and night, morning and okay. night. So after like a few years of seeing it morning and night, like every day, I'm like, God, seriously, what are you saying to me? What are you saying to me? What does this mean? And he said, be a warrior for me. This was years ago. And I was wow. like, okay. Yes, I'll be a warrior for you, thinking that I needed to pray for people, just intercede, pray. So that's probably, I would say, the beginning of like intercessory prayer for me. Mm -hmm. I've always prayed. When I prayed as a Catholic, I would pray with the rosary every day, mm -hmm. just religiously, okay, pray the rosary. Mm -hmm. Well, then starting in 2020, I started seeing 1111. Every day, 11, mm -hmm. 11. And I kept going, my girlfriends, I'm seeing 11, 11 all the time. I don't know what it means. Well, when you were on the window into the supernatural, you start talking about 11, 11. And I was like, oh my gosh, somebody else sees 11, 11. <laughs> okay. So you gave your Twitter handle. That was it. The rest is history. I reached out to you. <laughs> I reached out to you and you explained it. What does it mean? And then I reached out to you. What does 9, 11 mean? Because I had asked the Lord twice or the meaning of that. And he twice, he said, be a warrior for me. And that was before I really knew that I was even hearing him. So apparently I could hear him a long time ago and didn't really, mm -hmm. so I was like, okay, you know, but not really, I don't know, making that connection. So anyway, but then I started following you and a cool thing happened. I was seeking God's word. Okay. And really hungering for it. Like I need to know the Bible. I need yeah. to know what God's saying. Okay. And then what my way of responding to your posts was always to find a scripture. Yes. And that's how I got to know a lot about the scriptures. I got to know more and more of the scriptures because I really didn't know. I have the Bible app and I've got that little search thing there and I'll mm -hmm. put a keyword in like whatever comes in my spirit, put a keyword in and up comes scriptures. Then I discovered there's different versions. So you have, you know, mm -hmm. the passion, you've got the message. I love all of those. Yeah. So I would post a scripture and so then, but then what I would do is I would share it. So I'd post mm -hmm. a scripture, then I was sharing your word and the scripture. Okay. And some cool artwork or whatever picture that I've come up with it. And I was, I realized later on, as things started to happen, I was sowing the word. Wow. I was sowing God's word and there's a word wow. about sowing his word. Okay. And we're in a, we're in a season that I've, it's dawned on me that we are, we are sowing and reaping so fast, mm -hmm. literally, like you can almost before you sow, even you're reaping now. Yes. So I was sowing so much word everywhere and posting it on Instagram. My, my friends went from like, I was posting my pictures of my house and selfies <laughs> and all the things <laughs> till I repented of all that. <laughs> now, then I was posting nothing but Bible scriptures and people are like, Wow. You know, what has happened to her? But um, <laughs> so as I was sowing the word, though, I began reaping the word. And what I mean by that is this is what happened. So um, through Amanda Grace, I, I discovered Elijah's dreams. And through Elijah's dreams, I discovered Robin Bullock. <laughs> mm -hmm. And, you know, there's so many people that have made such an influence on me in my life. And yes. Robin Bullock is definitely one. And I started listening to some of his teachings and I was like, whoa, 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 you know, blowing my mind. And one day he started telling his story, his own testimonial about receiving tongues. And that really opened me up to receive because uh. I realized, then I realized, oh, shed the self-conscious con consciousness, shed mm -hmm. all the pretenses, just go with it. And he did a prayer over Elijah's dreams to get 
for a person to receive tongues and receive the baptism in the Holy Spirit. And I received it. I was in my kitchen. It was at nighttime. I'm doing the dishes. And I'm like, I receive it. I started speaking in tongues. I was wow. like, no. so then I, you know, wow. I, I would be doing, I'd be doing the dishes and stuff and I would start feeling the presence of the Lord <sighs> come on me so heavy. I was like in this euphoric tingling, buzzing wow. thing going on inside my body, like head to toe. And I'd be like, Oh Lord, you know, and this just started happening. Well, then I received I decided to do baptism because as a Catholic, of course, I was baptized as a baby, <laughs> but becoming born again, I realized, you know, there's a whole nother level of baptism. And yes. so I decided I need to be baptized. So I did get baptized at the river church. And then I decided I needed to go through deliverance, which I'd mm -hmm. highly recommend to any, anybody, no matter Amen. how Christian you think you are, no matter mm -hmm. if you're born again, listen, do it. Okay. Mm -hmm. And fortunately I'm in Florida here. So Donna Rigney's like three hours away from me. So oh, my friend and I, we, total, we drove over to Donna Rigney's church and we went through deliverance and then we stayed uh, for her Friday night mm -hmm. service, which she does prayer for the nation. Mm -hmm. And we didn't realize any of the stuff that was going to happen, you know, anyway. So we went through the deliverance, which was amazing. Um, my friend actually found out she had curses placed on her that there were was witchcraft against her and stuff. And they broke it off of her. And it was amazing because it really jived with what was going on in her life. Mm -hmm. But when we got there, prophet miles Kilby was there and I'd never heard of him. Whoa. Okay. Apparently he's been on Sid Roth and stuff. And I think mm -hmm. he was spoken over by Kim Clement when he was younger. I mean, he's been around for a long time. He's still a young person, fairly young. I mean, he's a dad now, I think, and everything, but amazingly anointed. Anyway, so he and Donna are there. And if you've never been to Donna's church, whoa, okay, you have to, if you can ever get there on Fridays, I mean, we're all going to experience this soon enough anyway, probably in our own homes, but she calls down the glory and it is so heavy like it's like this blanket of peace that comes on you and you're in like another world and I was this was my first time in the glory at her place I've yeah. been there another time a year later but first time in the glory there and the glory is so heavy on me that I'm like my arms are up but I I can barely stand up <laughs> and my arms are sh I'm shaking just tremoring <laughs> under the glory and at some point we, we sat down, I'm not sure why we sat down. I can't remember that part, but I sat down and my, my feet did not touch the ground. I'm literally, my Whoa. arms are shaking and my feet are up and I'm like suspended in air almost. Wow. And something big time was going on with me. Well, I'm kind of over to this side here. Miles is over here and Donna. And Miles says he's going to start prophesying in the glory. And he said, I love prophesying in the glory because mm. it's so amazing. So he starts, he calls up some guy and starts prophesying over him, pray, praying over him. And he is like dead on accurate, apparently, because the guy's like, uh, you know, wow. and the guy goes down under the spirit. And then the next thing I know, he goes, Amy. And I'm like, <laughs> you know, I'm like. <laughs> you know and i'm waiting for somebody else to go because it's never me <laughs> i would sit at the river church and you know pastor rodney's calling out people fire you know and all that and i'm like <laughs> you know never get called even though i want it right so um nobody goes up and my friend is like nudging me and she's like choo, choo. and i'm like oh my god it's me <laughs> so i go up and the most amazing thing happens. Jesus starts talking to him. Wow. And Jesus tells me that I have seen his face in a secret place. Mm. Oh, wow. wow. And I was not sure that I had seen him, but he was talking about when I was at the river church at a Sunday service and sitting there with communion elements in my hand. And we were about to take communion and I had my eyes closed and I was like instantly 
And it's like they say, was I there? Did I just see it? All I know is I heard it. I was there like I heard it. Mm -hmm. I was at the foot of the cross and Jesus was hanging on the cross. And it was profound because he was in agony, absolute agony. I could hear him, the agony of his breathing. It was horrendous. Um, And it was like, just as quick as I was there. And then next thing you know, I'm back in church. I open my eyes and I'm like, whoa. And then I close my eyes again and I'm trying to go back there, you know, again, but I could visualize it, but it could, I wasn't there again. But so was that really like, I always kind of question, you know, the enemy comes after you when you have yeah. these kind of experiences and like, yeah. you can't really see that. Um, so then, so Jesus said, I had seen his face in the secret place. He said he was healing me of something that no one would know. Okay. Miles would mm-hmm. know, never know. And he was, he, he's healing me of that. Um, he said, Jesus right now is pouring anointing oil on your head. And, um, he instructed miles and Donna to anoint my eyes with oil. So they got the oil, they anointed my eyes with oil. And the Lord said that that was for him to be able to reveal things to me that I would receive the fire anointing, um, which is different than the baptism in the Holy spirit, but I would Mm -hmm. receive the fire anointing in about six weeks time so that the Lord could reveal things to me. And it's dawned on me over time that the fire anointing burns out things in you that are not of God. And it prepares your heart and your mind and your, it prepares you to be holy before him and to walk with him. Um, Mm -hmm. Because if he's going to use you as a vessel, you have to be that. So, um, so he prophesied that over me and then I would, he would start revealing things to me. And I was like, And then I went down, I was down in the spirit for a long time and it was just amazing. And then, so then, um, like weeks later, I ended up at healing school at the river church, uh, at pastor Rodney Howard Brown's church. It's an amazing school. It's two weeks and you go every day and you're there for hours and you're infused with the word Mm -hmm. all day long. You're infused with the word. And you are, um, you know, it's just, you know, you know what God thinks about you, you know, um, what he thinks about your health, what he says about your well-being, and you know, that he's in you at all times. So I did that. And what's very interesting is at that, at the very end, the person that was running it, Pastor Ryan, he's very anointed, he's anointed in healing. He's got the fire anointing, all the things. He said, okay, I'm going to do something different this time. I've never done this before, but I'm going to impart the fire anointing to everybody at the end at the last day. And I was like, there we go. Off to, we're going to be off to the races here. Wow. So he imparted the healing, the, the, well, I had, I did receive some healing there. But let me tell you, before I tell you about that part, so what they do uh, when you're there at the healing school is they do like a little individual deliverance thing with you. They pray over you and, um, you know, they, they, you know, they make sure you have your tongues, all the things, okay, before you go on. So I already had my tongues, but this guy, I was waiting and I thought Pastor Ryan was going to pray over me, but it wasn't him. So at first I was like, "Mm, you know, dang, but you know, don't. Don't ever be disappointed how the Lord mm-hmm. orchestrates things, you know, really just go with the flow. Mm-hmm. But, um, and, and so I'm sitting there and I'm really getting to know everybody. Cause I was the last person. There were several people waiting <laughs> to have their deliverance and like everyone went, I thought maybe they forgot about me. And then finally they called me. And uh, so we were really running late and it, uh, I think his name is Jordan, pastor Jordan. He's the youth pastor. He prayed over me and I think he gave me my destiny for one thing, which is teacher, teacher. Okay. (laughs) So, which is interesting because that kind of fits with my life. Um, I'm not a teacher, but I teach things. Uh, And I've been told I'm anointed as a teacher. So there's, there probably is an anointing there for that. But Mm -hmm. so he prayed over me and it was a powerful prayer. And keeping in mind that Jesus prophesied over me with miles kilby okay 
and he's in this process, right? So I'm leaving Jordan praying for me and I'm late. I'm running back. They've already started worship. We're going back into a classroom. They've already started worship. And so I sneak in and I'm in the very back row. There's tall people in front of me. I can barely see up front, but you know, I can see the screen and I'm worshiping and I've got my arms up like this. And you know, when you're standing there and you kind of sway a little bit, especially when your eyes are closed. So I sway a little bit this way and I feel this jolt of electricity. I bumped into something there and it had electricity. It was just boom. And electricity went zoom through my arm. Mm. And I was like, whoa, there's something here. I thought it was an angel. So then as I sway a little this way, boom. I'm like, whoa, there's something that had, like, it's almost like it enveloped me. And I'm praying and I'm, I mean, I'm singing worship song. And then it, you know, it happens again and it keeps happening. Boom, wow. boom. Then all of a sudden out of my spirit, I start saying, you are holy, Lord. You are holy, Lord. It was Jesus. It was Jesus. He like was right there with me. And how I know it was him is the people up in front that were doing the worship, they were leading the worship. They couldn't see me. They couldn't hear me. Everyone was singing. By that time, everyone was singing in tongues. And I'm saying, you are holy, Lord, you are holy, Lord. And all of a sudden, the worship leader in the front of the room says, everybody, sing with me. Sing with the angels. You are holy, Lord. You are holy, Lord. You are holy, Lord. We're all in unison. I have total goosebumps right now. We're all in unison singing, you are holy. <laughs> so he was there. So I got my Bible. Okay. And I'm noticing it's 303 right now. <laughs> um, so the Lord shows me timestamps all the time. I don't do it on purpose. Never. I always notice it after he's got me posting at prophetic numbers, which correlate a lot of times to what I've just posted. It's mm -hmm. wild. It's like I'm on a puppet string and he's just, do, 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 you know, Amy, here you go. <laughs> yeah, post this at this time. Give her this thought. You know, it's like he's got some angel like working on me here. So, but so I got my Bible there when I was at the healing school. I got the fire anointing. Okay. And I was off to the races very next day it started. Okay. And wow. every morning I give my morning to the Lord. I get the Bible. I, um, get my coffee and I go sit in the quiet room. My husband knows to leave me alone there now. And just, he doesn't come in. Sometimes I'm in there for hours Yeah, and I come back out. So he's showing me things. And I realize that he is showing me, um, things about today every time. Mm -hmm. And as mm -hmm. I was mentioning to Diana, before we got started, I, to this day, like this is a miracle that happens every morning. <laughs> like when you see a post from me that right now you're witnessing a miracle in real life, because I still don't know all the script. I can't like now, because I pray so much with the word, I know certain ones, but I don't know the orders of the, the order of the books for the most <laughs> part. Uh, you know, I couldn't, couldn't do this if I tried, you know, I, I yeah. could, can't, oftentimes I can't think of a scripture. I have to look it up. It's just a miracle what he's doing, but so he'll lead me to stuff and it's about what's happening now. And when I knew that it was really like purposeful, when he really nailed it, like it was purposeful, we had company coming over and I was running late, but I hadn't gotten into the Bible yet. So I was feeling like, mm, you know, do I do it now? I'm going to feel rushed. Anyway, so I grab the Bible and I'm like, do my thing. I'm praying in the spirit. Holy, I always say, Holy Spirit, lead me to scripture that you want me to see today. Help me to understand it. Help me to know what you want me to know from it. Help me to share what you want me to share about it. Give me the words I yield to you. And I open. So I'm like, I, it's always random. I always have my eyes closed and I just open. And he'll either tell me to open to a tab. And then I will. And then I keep my eyes closed and he'll say, turn. X number of pages, and then I'll turn to X number of pages. Always astounds me where I'm at. Sometimes he'll tell me, 
he'll say, I'm going to just turn you to a page today. I'm like, okay. And he'll turn me to a page. So oftentimes he'll grab a tab and then you grab pages, pages, boom. And then I'm like right there. I mean, it's totally like a miracle. <laughs> but uh, when I knew that it was really purposeful was that day that I was rushing and he had me open. He opened me to a page that day. No, 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 he didn't. No. He had me open and then he said, turn nine pages. That's what okay. it was. And I was at Matthew one. Okay. Well, if you've ever read Matthew one, it's the book of ancestry of Jesus Christ. And it's, he begat, 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 begat. And it's like, goes on with all these names. And I'm like, Oh yeah, I shouldn't have rushed, you know, uh, <laughs> sorry, God, you know, I'll come back after because what could you possibly be telling me, you know, about he begat, 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 right? <laughs> so then mm -hmm. later on in the evening, the company went home. I had quiet time. I sat down. I opened the Bible randomly again, random page with my eyes closed. And he says, turn nine pages. I'm like, okay. And I am back at Matthew one. <laughs> <laughs> and what I is, was like, what are the possibilities whoa, of that happening? Whoa, whoa, whoa. And then came this long thread, which I won't go in today because we have a lot to go over today um, that he's showing me over the past 12 days, but um, it was all about how God keeps his promises, that he's kept his promise to bless the nations through Abraham by giving us Jesus, the Messiah, the anointed one. And he comes through the legal lineage of Abraham. So he gave me this whole lesson on the promise wow. to Abraham and how we are heirs of the promise of Abraham. And we are, we still have yet to fulfill all of that. And we are going to be fulfilling that so he had shown me that and I was like oh wow that really like put a exclamation point on things when he led me back to the same place but in in the lead up to today he on the September 1st I noticed that he's almost doing like a storyline okay of showing me this thing cool. and that thing then that thing then that thing and it, and it ended up being 12 scriptures for 12 days Wow. Okay. And so we know 12 is the number of his perfect government <clears throat> and God reveals the number 12 to us to show he's in control. So he's actively <laughs> ruling as our King and 12 is a witness to his perfect plan. Wow. So, yeah. So the first one he showed me, um, and by the way, um, I know that, um, Diana's going to post, I think in the comments, but you can find me on, um, X USA beach blonde, through social, I post Florida or FL Beach Blonde. So, um, and so I'll start with the first one was Luke 21, he led me to, and he had instructed me to open my Bible randomly and told me to turn 24 pages. And this was a very heavy word. And sometimes when it's a heavy word, I noticed I get extremely drunk in the spirit hmm. where I can barely even, so as I'm posting, I'm getting more and more drunk to where mm. I can't even walk hardly and I can't even hardly type. And so wow. I got very drunk in the spirit as I was doing this. And the other thing that he'll do that confirms is when I'm typing or putting together the message because I'm yielding to him and he gives me the thoughts, but if I nail it, I get hot <laughs> fire all <laughs> over me. And so mm -hmm. I'm like, you know, uh, just on fire. So drunk in the spirit and on fire. Mm -hmm. Um, but he said uh, through Luke 21, he said, stand against persecution for your beliefs. Not one hair on your head will be harmed. Wow. And he gave this scripture, Luke 21, 10 through 19, nation will fight nation and ruler fight ruler. Over and over, huge earthquakes will occur in various places. There will be famines. You'll think at times the very sky is falling, but before any of this happens, they'll arrest you, hunt you down, drag you to court in jail. It will go bad from, from bad to worse. Dog eat dog. Everyone at your throat because you carry my name. You'll end up on the witness stand called to testify. Make up your mind right now not to worry about it. I'll give you the words and wisdom that will reduce all your accusers to stammers and stutters. You'll even be turned in by parents, brothers, relatives, and friends. Some of you will be killed. There is no telling who will hate you because of me. Even so, every detail of your body and soul 
even the hairs of your head is in my care. Nothing of you will be lost. Staying with it, that's what is required. Stay with it to the end. You will not be sorry. You'll be saved. <laughs> um, so then he goes on, um, you will hear of wars, insurrections, disorder, and confusion. There will be violent earthquakes, famine, pestilence, deadly plagues, great signs of terror, and great signs from heaven. Men will die from fear as the heavens are shaken. Mm. All are signs that deliverance is near. Mm. And he gave me um, it, Luke 21, 25 through 28 from the message. It will seem like all hell has broken loose. Sun, moon, stars, earth, sea in an uproar and everyone all over the world in a panic. The wind knocked out of them by the threat of doom. Uh -huh. The powers that be quaking. And then, then they'll see the son of man welcomed in grand style, a glorious welcome. When all this starts to happen up on your feet, stand tall with your heads high, help is on the way. And then he says, do not fear. All these things must occur as the kingdom era is birth. Take your mm -hmm. focus off the world, remain alert and watchful, pray for strength to stand in the presence of the son of man. And he gave me Luke 21, 29 through 36 in the message. He told them a story. Look at the look at a fig tree, any tree for that matter. When the leaves begin to show, one tells you that summer is right around the corner. The same here. When you see these things happen, you know God's kingdom is about here. Don't brush this off. I'm not just saying this for some future generation, but for this one too. These things wow. will happen. Sky and earth will wear out. My words will not wear out. Be on your guard. Don't let the sharp edge of your expectation get dulled by parties and drinking and shopping. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, that day is going to take you by complete surprise. Spring on you suddenly like a trap. For it's going to come on everyone everywhere at once. So whatever you do, don't fall asleep at the wheel. Yeah. Pray constantly that you will have the strength and will to make it through everything that's coming and end up on your feet before the son of man. Is that amazing? Like That's amazing. That's how we started off September 1st. So we've wow. heard <laughs> we've heard in the prophetic that mm -hmm. September is really going to be an amazing month, you mm -hmm. know, for what's coming and what I've realized is that um, you know, Holy Spirit is prophesying through God's word. Mm -hmm. So what he's showing me is he's prophesying. Yeah. So he's using me as a vessel because I've yielded to him and I have a desire mm -hmm. for the word and I've sown the word. So I'm reaping the word and I'm sowing and reaping it, yeah. but he is, he's prophesying through the word. So in God's mm -hmm. word is, is prophecy. Yeah. Um. So then he led me to the second one, which is on uh, September 2nd, Zechariah 14. And he's had me in Zechariah a lot. Um, and Holy Spirit this day um, had led me there for the fifth time. And he led me specifically to start at verse 12 of Zechariah 14, which is God's perfect government. He is saying he is in control and he's actively ruling. And it happened that this was on page uh, 1222 of the Bible. Oh which is Job 12.22, which is dark to light. Wow. So Job 12.22, he uncovers mysteries that are difficult to grasp and understand out of the darkness and brings black gloom and the shadow of death into light. And he gave me Zechariah 14.12. Now this will be the plague that this is amazing. This is like, if you're one of the evil guys, take note and repent now. Uh, it says, now this will be the plague with which the Lord shall strike all the peoples that have warred against Jerusalem. That's the United States. Wow. Their flesh will rot while they stand on their feet and their eyes will rot in their sockets and their tongue will rot in their mouth. Mm -hmm. Like the Lord is pretty much done with these people. Um, mm -hmm. And then interesting, the very next day. So this is... Um, September 3rd, uh, Zechariah 13 and 14. So he led me back there again. Okay. And this was the sixth time he led me there. Wow. And 
he showed me um, there is a fountain of provision and mercy that flows from heaven. Mm. This is inexhaustible for the forgiveness <laughs> of sins. This is the only way sins can be cleansed. Yep. Our past, present, and future works or restitution cannot cleanse us. It is only by the blood of Jesus that we are made righteous. Yes. Sin must be dealt with and put away. It cannot be excused, condoned, or compromised with. The foundations of the throne are of God are righteousness and justice. Yes. And then he time stamped that for me. Um, and I had posted that right at 11 o'clock. And 11 mm -hmm. means transition. Okay. Mm -hmm. We are transitioning into the, this is, came into my spirit. We are yeah. transitioning into the kingdom era. Mm -hmm. Proclaim that Jesus is your Lord and Savior. Bear your heart before him. Confess your sins and ask that you be forgiven and washed clean by his blood. Yes. So that was the third one. Wow. And the fourth one, he led me the next day um, to Ezekiel 9. And again, you know, guys, this is all with my eyes closed yeah. and just, you know, amazing. So, um, and this came in my spirit. Even though the entire nation, the United States is under judgment, God has commanded that every righteous person within it be marked mm -hmm. to protect them from the coming invasion of death angels and to preserve them for the age to come. And he gave me scripture, Ezekiel 9, 4 through 5. The Lord said to him, go through the midst of the city throughout mm -hmm. all of Jerusalem and put a mark on the foreheads of the men who sigh in distress and grieve over all the repulsive acts which are being committed in it. But to the others, I heard him say, follow him, the man with the scribe's writing case throughout the city and strike. Do not let your eyes have pity and do not spare anyone. And then he gave me a timestamp on that of one, one o'clock. And mm. so on. Um, wow. Amanda Grace has been speaking of in, uh, the eclipses that are coming. Mm -hmm. There's been one already that's gone and then there's two more coming. And they form the Aleph sign, which is almost like an A, mm -hmm. okay? Um, and they form the Aleph right over the United States, um, which is God's stamp, basically, He's stamping the United States, one nation under God, okay? Mm. Um, so one meaning strength, meaning I will, oneness, unity in the beginning, okay? So he's bringing us um, to a place. And this also led me to the warning uh, prophetic word that Julie Green gave on January 18th, um, which is a warning of what is to come. And it said, um, an excerpt from that from Julie Green said, my children get prepared. Not only will you see my glory revival and things that I have never done for mankind before, but you will also see great death. And that is what you need to be prepared for. There is a wave of unprecedented death coming I need my church to be prepared. I need you to build up your faith so that when people come, they will come running because the world will look so dark, evil, and upside down. You are able and prepared. My church, my children, that's when your light will be magnified and my love will be glorified. I will shine my faith. I will shine my light through you in the midst of the death and the evil. My goodness, my blessing, and the life that I have will be poured out and manifested even more because my grace is sufficient for you. So I told you, this is the hour when they will come running. They will come running into your churches, and they will not be big enough. Prepare for those stadiums because there will be so much death all over the news at the same time. I will raise people up that will do my will and will be used by me for more miracles. Limbs will grow out, blind people will be able to see, deaf ears will open, and people in wheelchairs will no longer have to stay in them. I'm asking you today, are you ready? Are you ready? Saturate yourself in my word and prepare your hearts because some people's hearts will fail them because of what's about to come on this earth. Mm -hmm. So. That's amazing because if you look at yeah. just what he had shown me earlier in the week, like everything, all the dots are just connected. Mm -hmm. 
Then he brought me, then the next day, listen to how this connects. The very next day, he brought me to Luke 10. And um, he had had me open randomly to a tab with my eyes closed and told me to turn 12 pages. And this came into my spirit. The harvest is abundant. The farm hands are few. Pray for Mm. the Lord of harvest to send laborers to gather it and pray for them because they will be like lambs in the midst of wolves. And he led me to Luke 10, two through three. He was saying to them, the harvest is abundant for there are many who need to hear the good news about salvation, but the workers, those available to proclaim the message of salvation are few. Therefore, prayerfully ask the Lord of harvest to send out workers into his harvest. Go your way, listen carefully. I am sending you out like lambs among wolves. And then I got, don't take anything with you. Bless those who will receive you. Anyone who rejects you rejects me. Move on, heal the sick and set the captives free. You have been given all authority and power over darkness and nothing will harm you. Um, And then this led me to think back to what he had just shown me, which was that Holy Spirit revealed that God has marked the foreheads of everyone to be preserved in this hour. And those that he has marked will flood the churches. So be ready to receive them and call for revival. Blessed are you who have eyes to see. Many Mm -hmm. have longed to see what you see, Mm -hmm. including the prophets of old that like Isaiah and ones that prophesied this day and never got to see, but they're, they're in the cloud of witnesses. And so they are witnessing from heaven and high-fiving up there. And then I was led to Luke 10, 23 through 24. When Jesus was alone with the 12, he said to them, You are privileged to see see and hear all these things. Mm -hmm. Many kings and prophets of old long to see these days of miracles that you've been favored to see. They would have given everything to hear the revelation you've been favored to hear. Yet they didn't get to see a glimpse or hear even a whisper. So then later on, I'm walking through the house and I'm pondering about this. And I heard Mm -hmm. in my spirit, the Lord said to me, This is not just a word that you were given this morning. This is your commission. Wow. So he's telling us, don't just think of it like, oh, what a nice word. Do be doers. Mm. Um, So Isaiah then um, on September 6th, this is the sixth word, Mm -hmm. Isaiah 18. So um, I had my eyes closed. He led me. This was the second time he led me to Isaiah 18. And in my spirit, um, America is about to be pruned so that Mm. she can flourish. Okay. Mm. Um, And I was looking back to when I was shown Isaiah 18 before, and it describes (laughs) an attack on on America to destroy it. Um, Mm. A scattered people, clean shaven people, a powerful nation, a dominating nation, a land divided by rivers very much describes America. You know, some people, um, I've heard people talk about, you know, well, America is not in the Bible. It's in the Bible. (laughs) So, um, Mm. and then this leads back again to that word from Julie Green about the deaths that are coming. And um, as I got further into this week and thinking about um, who the invaders are, because if we look, you know, kind of classically God, when there's a judgment, He brings a nation against a nation and then Mm -hmm. he'll rebuke the nation that came against the nation. You know, he like, Mm -hmm. that's how he does. And um, so I don't know exactly how it's going to look if he's going to bring a nation against us or if it's just going to be, or if it's part of the part part and parcel of the same thing, because the Babylonian invaders, okay. Mm -hmm. The Assyrians of our day um, are in cahoots with the CCP. Yeah. So you just don't know, you know, is it going to be something like that? Or is it going to just be an attack that they, you know, all the different wicked things that they Mm -hmm. have planned, but they're not going to succeed. So we'll just put that out there. Um, So on the 7th, September 7th, I was led to John six and he had said, turn five pages to get here. So five is grace. Mm -hmm. And it came in my spirit. Jesus is the bread of life that never perishes. Don't seek him for the miraculous and signs and material goods he can give you. Don't seek him for those things, but seek him for the spiritual fulfillment and eternal life that he can give you. 
know and accept him as your savior. So have a right heart posture mm -hmm. when you seek him. Okay, so then he led me to, on September 8th, Isaiah 36. And here, I was led here. This is the third time I was led here. Wow. And he said, completely turn off mainstream media and truther media, much of mm -hmm. which is intended to awaken, but is crucially missing God's perspective. Yeah. Both will instill, it, both will instill fear and rob mm -hmm. you of your faith. Mm -hmm. listen only to what God is saying in his word and via his prophets. And if you hear his voice, listen to what he is telling you. Mm -hmm. And um, I basically came up with an image. Keep calm and listen to God is, is <laughs> the mantra there. Amen. Um, yeah. And then I had a confirmation of this. Um, oftentimes the Lord will confirm what he's shown me. So what Holy Spirit has shown me in the scripture I see that first thing in the morning and then I'll go and listen to Julie Green or I'll read your word or, you know, Hank Kuhneman or somebody. Mm -hmm. And, you know, or even Kent Christmas, he's confirming or Robin Bullock, he's confirming through the prophets mm -hmm. um, and, and things, uh, what he's shown me in his word. And so on this day, he confirmed through Julie Green um, that we have not moved forward toward the promised land because our words outside of our prayer closets do not match what we're saying inside of our prayer closets. Wow. So inside of our prayer closets, we're like, I take authority, you know, no, no, no. And you're like, down with you devil, you know? And then we get out and we're like, did you hear that the WAF <laughs> is doing, you know, the WHO was like done the sovereignty mm -hmm. thing and oh my mm -hmm. God, and, you know? Mm -hmm. So like, freak and out. God, I know. And so what got... <laughs> So, you know, what I got was um, what you allow through your eye gates and your ear gates enters your heart. That's right. And then what's in your heart comes out of your mouth. Mm -hmm. And the scripture I got was Proverbs 13, 3. The one who guards his mouth, thinking before he speaks, protects his life. The one who opens his lips wide and chatters without thinking comes to ruin. Wow. So we're, we're marching towards the promised land. And we have to be a hundred percent consistent speaking God's words and saying, Amen. you know, and even like, cause family members will be like, uh, oh, you know, this and that mm -hmm. and the other thing. And I'm like, mm -hmm. you know, and it's interesting because, you know, and that's, a, that's a good one to know when to just be quiet and like go off mm -hmm. yourself and say something, mm -hmm. because, you know, you'll say, well, that's not going to happen. And they go, what do you mean? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. You know, just kind of gets a little bit gnarly there for a minute but um and then a thing that came up um you know case in point on you know listen to the prophetic understand the events of the day and what's happening whether it's a hurricane or whatever um based on what is god saying because yeah. we have hurricane uh lee coming right mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. everyone's like oh my god it's turning into a super storm it's gonna be like cat mm -hmm. six i'm like what is that? You know, cat six. I've never heard mm. of cat six. Yeah. But anyway, you yeah. know, so there's like all this fear mongering <laughs> and stuff. And then you had, then yes. you had, you know, the talking points <laughs> of the weather media, uh -huh. um, rapid intensification, you know, they all got that one at four o'clock in the morning. Uh -huh. So anyway, but if you go and you listen and you look back at uh, one of the words that Julie Green received was that there was a hurricane, a big old hurricane coming that the Lord was going to use to uncover things in the Atlantic ocean. And to stop an attack, a physical attack on the nation. Yes. Okay. So he's using that. So, so we need to pray, wow. right? We need to be like, so my prayers, you know, once I saw that, I was like, oh, so my prayers changed for like, do God's will, Lee. <laughs> you know, uncover <laughs> yeah. the subs, you know, whatever, <laughs> um, take out the enemy and then yes. tamp yourself down and don't hit the land, <laughs> you know, <laughs> um, so, and then he's showing me it's 3.30 now, 3.3 again. Okay. Okay. So, awesome. um, yeah. So then he led me to Jeremiah 12 on, so on September 9th, Jeremiah 12, and came into my spirit. We must learn to trust God and draw on his strength now with our present challenges in mm. order to prepare ourselves for even greater challenges yeah. to come because of yep. judgment upon the land. Okay. So, um. This is a quote from somebody by the last name Morgan. I don't know his first name. I'm sorry. 
Um, but it says, God never calls us to contend with horsemen until he has trained us by the lesser strain of contending with footmen. Okay. Um, and then Jeremiah 12, 13, they have sown wheat, but have reaped thorns. They have worn themselves out, but without profit. And they shall be ashamed of their, they shall be ashamed of your lack of harvest and revenues because of the fierce and glowing anger of the Lord. God spoke to the invading Babylonians, warning them that they should take no pleasure or satisfaction in their harvest upon the cities and land of Judah. Mm -hmm. They would have to reckon with the fierce anger of the Lord. Yeah. All their projects shall fail. None of their enterprises shall succeed. They are enemies to God and therefore cannot have his blessing. And so that's um, someone named Clark. Um, a lot of times I will use, um, so a lot of times when he shows me scriptures, I have to study because, you know, like a lot of times when I, when I finally get the, the message, what he wants to say, and I'm feeling the fire and all that, <laughs> I go back and look at it and I'm like, I didn't ever got that. <laughs> I didn't read that scripture. I don't know, you know, like, but you know, he shows me like, um, online there's enduring word and there's different, um, places that, you know, that have some good. Um, foundation in the okay. world study but so mm -hmm. along with this then i'm still on jeremiah 12 um in his judgment god often uses one wicked nation to scourge another and afterwards then he'll rebuke them for it god will deal with these babylonian invaders he will take care of his people and pluck out a remnant to advance to the promised land mm -hmm. so um the promise of exile and judgment was sure, but so was the promise of compassion and return. Jeremiah mm. need not despair wow. at the seeming prosperity of the wicked and trouble of the righteous. God would move all things according to his perfect yes. plan. So, and that's interesting because this is Jeremiah 12. So again, we're back to, you know, God's <laughs> perfect government, his yep. perfect plan. And I find that a lot of times in the scriptures, the numbers of the scriptures add up and it's now 333. Three, three. Interesting. Oh, okay. <laughs> it just kind of pops off the oh screen. Gosh. Like it's like boom, you know, yep. in my face. It yes. just pops off. Yes. Um, so Jeremiah 12, 14 through 17, I was led to, thus says the Lord against all my evil neighbor nations who touch the inheritance which I have caused my people, Israel, to inherit. Behold, I will pluck them up from their land, and I will pluck up the house of Judah from among them. And after I have plucked them up, I will return and have compassion on them mm -hmm. and will bring them back again, every man to his heritage and every man to his land. And it Oops, froze a bit. Hope she comes back in here. Just ask angels of communications that you come reestablish this again. All right, we're back. <laughs> okay, so um, so the Lord says that in his mercy, God will give the invaders an opportunity to turn to him and repent. And if they do, and they turn from their wicked ways, he'll establish them also in our midst, in the midst of his people, to share in the blessing and goodness of God. So it's amazing how he works. Um mm -hmm. You yeah. know, and he's just a good God and gives everybody ample yeah, chances yes. to turn to him. He doesn't want to lose anybody. Yeah. Um, okay. So then on September 10th, he led me to Isaiah three, and this was the fifth time he led me there. <laughs> wow. Um, and it basically just popped in my spirit. It's harvest time. Ah. Um, Isaiah three, 10 through 11, reassure the righteous that their good living will pay off, but doom to the wicked disaster everything they did will be done to them so that wow. reminds you of Haman right wow um, talk about sowing and reaping exactly so um and this was interesting I was led to this um Jerusalem and Judah have sinned in what they say and in what they do in fact what they say and what they do provoke the eyes of his glory 
Their mm -hmm. sin is openly displayed and they have no sense of shame. The cultural mm -hmm. dynamic in Isaiah's day was probably much the same as it is in our time. Yeah. In the name of frankness and honesty, and let's not be hypocrites, all kinds of sin are approved and no mm -hmm. one is allowed to proclaim a standard yeah. unless they live up to it perfectly. In the days when the branch of the Lord, Jesus, reigns, the distinguishing mark of all, including the daughters of Zion, will be that they will be called holy. Mm. Holy does not mean super spiritual. It does not mean sinless perfection. Mm -hmm. It does not mean spiritually superior or obnoxious. <laughs> it means a life, a heart, a mind, and a body that is genuinely separated to the Lord. It is a life lived apart from the thinking and heart of this world, this flesh and the devil, and it's lived apart to the Lord. This is what is coming, which is amazing. It's going to be a ma an amazing yes. world that we're stepping into. Yes. Um, and then on September 11th, he led me to Isaiah 10. And this was for the fourth time he's led me there. Um, and this is amazing because... One of the keys that I mentioned um, from Ecclesiastes that what has been will be again. And what we've learned um, from the prophetic that the characters in the Old Testament, even in the New Testament, the, the characters, those people, I don't want to call them character because they were real people, but they replay. So Cyrus, David, Hezekiah, you know, and so as I'm led to these scriptures, one of the things he reveals to me is who this character is, okay? Mm -hmm. So I've learned that the king of Assyria is Obama. Wow. The Assyrians are the New World Order gang. So the Assyrian mm -hmm. army, that's the New World Order mm -hmm. gang. He had a word here about Obama in Isaiah wow. 10. Um, he doesn't like Obama too much. I mean, he, lo he loves Obama. I should say, shouldn't say that. He loves Obama because Obama is his son. He loves him just like he loves you and me. And he would like for Obama to repent and be righteous. But he doesn't like what Obama does. And he mm -hmm. doesn't like his heart, where his heart's at right now. Um, he said, the Lord will allow Obama to execute his plans against America until it has accomplished God's purpose and ch of chastisement and purification. And then Obama's a goner. So pray for Obama, pray, pray that he will repent and he won't spend eternity in hell for what, you know, for what he's doing. Um, let me to Isaiah 10 verse 12. So again, perfect government is perfect plan. Therefore, when the Lord has completed all his work of chastisement and purification to be executed on Mount Zion and on Jerusalem, it shall be that he will inflict punishment on the fruit of the thoughts, words, and deeds of the stout and arrogant heart of the king of Assyria and the haughtiness of his pride. And he led me to Isaiah 10, 17. So there's that number 17 that we see associated with you. <laughs> and the light of Israel shall come, I'm sorry, and the light of Israel shall become a fire and his holy one a flame, and it will burn and devour the Assyrians, thorns and briars in one day. Wow. So wow. judgment's coming, and I felt to post a picture of a gavel with mm -hmm. that. Um, and here's one more thing about that, um, is that uh, in my research, I found in the last days, the Assyrian or Antichrist or the beast will be seeking to establish his world government and especially to eliminate the nation Israel and all Christians in every nation. Mm. So if you have any idea why God's not happy, right? Hmm. Uh, with that person and then the last scripture he led me to uh, was this morning on september 12th which is um nahum one and it's the second time he's led me here to nahum one and he's prophesying the end of the new world order gang the assyrians and their <laughs> chosen leader obama hmm. so we've heard that obama sort of was groomed to be head of the hmm. new world order okay so it's not surprising he's in the bible Mm -hmm. so um here i wrote uh it was led by spirit to write the lord is avenging us and is full of wrath wow. the earth is upheaved at his presence 
He is a refuge for the righteous in this day of trouble. Mm -hmm. With an overrunning flood, he will pursue our enemies. COVID 2.0 and lockdowns will fail. And that's actually, I think, written in the word here. Um, so he led me to Nahum 8, Nahum 1, 8 through 12. Okay. Okay. But with an overrunning flood, he will make a full end of Nineveh's very sight and pursue his enemies into darkness. What do wow. you devise and how mad is your attempt to plot against the Lord? Yes. He will make a full end of Nineveh. Then listen to this. Affliction, which my people shall suffer from Assyria, shall not rise up a second time. <laughs> is that interesting? That is interesting. I immediately wow. thought of this pan pan de pandemic 2.0. <laughs> Um, okay, uh, for the Ninevites are as bundles of thorn branches for fuel, and even while drowned in their drunken carousing, they shall be consumed like stubble, fully dry, mm -hmm. in the day of the Lord's wrath. There is one gone forth out of you, O Nineveh, who plots evil against the Lord, a villainous counselor, the king mm -hmm. of Assyria, who counsels for wickedness and worthlessness. Thus says the Lord, though they be in full strength and likewise many, even so shall the Assyrians be cut down when their evil wow. counselor shall pass away. Wow. Though I have afflicted you, Jerusalem, that's the United States, I will not cause you to be afflicted for your mm -hmm. past sins anymore. Wow. So that's amazing. And then wow. I have one more. Um, which he brought to my attention after I thought it was all done. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and this is Nahum 1, 12 through 15. Thus says the Lord, though they be in full strength and likewise many, even so shall the Assyrians be cut down when their evil counselor shall pass away. Though I have afflicted you, you Jerusalem, I will not cause you to be afflicted for your past sins anymore. For now will I break his yoke off from you and will uh -huh. burst your bonds asunder. And the Lord has given a commandment concerning you, evil Assyrian counselor, that no more of your name shall be born, nor shall your name be perpetuated. Out of the house of your gods, I will cut off the graven and molten images. I will make their temple your tomb. For you are vile and despised. Behold, upon the mountains, the feet of him who brings good tidings, telling of the Assyrian's death, who publishes mm -hmm. peace. Celebrate mm -hmm. your feasts, O Judah. Perform your vows, for the wicked counselor, the king of Assyria, shall no more come against you or pass through your land. He is mm -hmm. utterly cut off. Wow. So um, he gave me, and when he gave me that, Last thing, Mary gave me a timestamp, just putting a seal on it. So basically, it wasn't like good enough. He, I had posted like I'm taking Obama out. Mm -hmm. He was like, no, I'm taking him, his false gods, <laughs> you know, all the things. Boom, gone. So he gave me a timestamp, eleven twenty-two, which mm. is Matthew eleven twenty-two. I tell you further, it shall be more endurable for Tyre and Sidon on the day of judgment than for you. So wow. he's talking to Obama there. So, um, yeah, so I kind of, I feel like from September 1st to September 12th, he's kind of like, almost like preparing, you know, mm -hmm. get your hearts in the right place, get ready to go after my yes. harvest. This is what I'm doing in your land. I'm setting you free. I'm removing the bonds of slavery mm -hmm. and I'm taking out your wicked rulers that, think they wow. own this place and they don't <laughs> wow amy that is incredible that is beautiful um, thank you so much for sharing that with us and um, i hope audience you are all inspired to dig into the word and just believe that the holy spirit wants you in the word and that he will direct you where you need to go uh, and you will be amazed at what the treasures you discover and the confirmations of where we are right now as a nation. Um, 
He's used a lot of stories like the Red Sea crossing, um, Lazarus mm-hmm. rising from the dead, Jesus himself. Um, for the disciples, it must have been the end of their world when the, their Savior was yeah. killed. Yes. Uh, but God had a plan. <laughs> yeah. And he does right now, too. So he Absolutely. is coming to rescue us. And, Absolutely. Yeah. Anything else you wanted to share before we say farewell? <laughs> um, I just wanted to make a shout out to all the people in our, our group on X. <laughs> That I interact yes. with a lot, you know? Amazing. Um, I, yeah, I just think you're an amazing group of people. Um, I'm so blessed by you. And, you know, God wants us in his word. And if we ask Holy Spirit to show mm-hmm. us and lead us in scripture, he will. Mm-hmm. Um, he will. I know a, a few people um, that have started posting some things um, in that group that, you know, that the Holy Spirit's pretty consistently showing them. Um, Mm -hmm. some things in the word and he'll lead you so you know it's just a matter of asking um and i just find the more that i reach out to him and the more that i find the 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 more that i'm getting away from less scripted prayer Mm -hmm. and more into what robin bullock refers to as tehillah praise Mm -hmm. and just tehillah prayer which is from my heart just saying it from my heart to him yeah, just sharing my heart with him and letting it just flow. Mm-hmm. Um, that I I will go from you know basically I just feel his presence, like I feel mm-hmm. his presence come upon mm-hmm. me. Um, and what was amazing is the other day you posted um a, in a word that he he looked at you with love and you melted, mm-hmm. and I had that had happened to me the night before. <laughs> So funny. When I, mean, I was it's not funny, it's like amazing. It's amazing. I was like, because I melted. I was like crying. Yes. I was like, yes. oh, you know, no, you're completely and, undone. Yeah. So I, so when I see him, when I visualize Jesus, I keep seeing him with long hair. <laughs> And then I get stuck between Akian's painting, which everyone who <laughs> says they've seen Jesus says he has short hair. In my mind, I'm going back and forth, but I gravitate to the long hair. Then sometimes he looks like Jonathan Rumi. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, whatever. You it know, is I just go whatever. on what I <laughs> I mean, probably he he he's like, you know, looks like all of them to everybody. But yeah. Um, another thing, just one more thing that's amazing is. When I had that experience with Jesus, being present with Jesus at the yes. healing school, yes. later on that afternoon, I had an experience that somebody confirmed for me, and I'm trying to think who it was that I was listening to. Oh my gosh, I'm going to have to think. It was a prophet, and he was talking about how, oh, it was Ash. Oh. It was Ash. All right. Ash West, our prophetic Ash dreamer. West. It was Ash. Okay. <laughs> because I had this vision and I told somebody and he was like, awesome. You know, like, and didn't get like the reception I thought it would get. Yeah. And I, thought, I think he thought I was full of it. Mm. I'm like, okay. So, but when everybody was worshiping in the room, I saw Jesus in the aisle, Mm -hmm. dancing, just reveling in our praise, reveling in our praise. He was just like, yes, yes. And then he was going around. So people would have their arms up and they were praising and he would go around and like high five them. Mm -hmm. He was like, yes. Oh, that's beautiful. He's going around the room. And then when it came time, it like transitioned in the room to where like um, people were being ministered to. Okay, for healing, Mm -hmm. Jesus multiplied himself. And it was Jesus before every person. Every person had Jesus there with them. He was in front of each person. He was right there. It was like he was he was tuned into them individually. So even though Jesus is everywhere all at once, and he can be in that room and he can be all over the world and everywhere all at once. He can also be in that room with each person at the same time. And so I don't know how that happens in the spiritual and all that, but I saw him basically (laughs) like, 
you know, like he just divided, he was just Jesus everywhere. And Ash talked about that. And I was like, that is confirmation of what I saw there. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. It's amazing. It Life is, is pretty good. Life is pretty darn good. It and is. um I wouldn't trade it for anything. I wouldn't go back pre-COVID. I wouldn't nope. um, I wouldn't do any of that. But, no. We have an awesome um, new day coming. Yeah, we sure do. Yep. No fear. No fear. Nope. Just full of just full of hope. Mm -hmm. I have a lot of hope. And I just want to say thank you to Diana because <laughs> you you have had a very huge impact on my life. Oh, um, your words every day. I mean, the Lord, I know the Lord is, it's the Lord's words and all that, but mm -hmm. you know, just your obedience with him and your demeanor and everything, you you exude beauty. You do. So you're <laughs> Thank you're fulfilling you, your death. You're fulfilling your yeah, destiny. Yeah. You really are. Um, but it's very, it's very important. Um, I listen to the prophets all the time and I'm glad I have that perspective really. And truly if I, because I'm the type that would dwell on things and be like, Oh, this and that. And I would be, I'd be the type calling all my friends and, you know, Oh, oh you know, <laughs> yeah. and now I'm not, now they call me wow. and I'm like, yeah, I don't watch the news. I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. Oh, did you see Obama? I oh no. Did you see Biden? So no, funny. no, I did not. I don't watch. I don't care. Yeah. You know, I just don't. Yeah. But um, yeah, so it's given me a whole new perspective. And I would just say, you know, pray for me and pray for all of us that have spouses who mm -hmm. are not fully awake or about to be really shaken out of their boots. Mm -hmm. It's going to be, that's going to be our job yeah. number one. Yeah. Yeah. That is one of our assignments. So, yep. Yep. Well, so, thank you, Amy. You are delightful. I am so blessed to have you in my life and so pleased that you said yes. And I hope that you'll come on again sometime. Oh, sure. I will. All Absolutely. right. That sounds great. <laughs> and thank you everyone for joining us today. We appreciate you taking your time to listen and we hope you were very blessed. So we bless now with his peace his grace and his glory until we meet again.